The Blacklist Season 8 has ended and leaves us with many speculations. Fans of Raymond and Elizabeth are devastated about the fate of their favorite characters in this thriller series. So I'm feeling a little vulnerable. I'm going to do everything in my power to take you down. I have my share of killers, bang, 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 bang. but not one like Elizabeth. How does it end? You'll find out. For the time being, it is unclear what will happen in incoming season 9. But if you want to find out, then check out this video on Cine Wizard. If you are in those people who haven't watched Blacklist or have missed some big chunks, then you have come to the right place. Because today, Cine Wizard is going to tell you everything from start to end. Well, without wasting any time, let's roll. Can you tell us what's going on? Nothing. They tell me today's your first day as a profiler. Congratulations. Before we start telling you its story, let us tell you about its cast and main plot. Premiered on NBC on September 23, 2013, this show is created by John Bockenkamp, who is also its producer. Must be good to be home again, sir. Oh, we'll see about that. A story revolves around a former U.S. naval officer who entered into the world of crime and become one of the notorious criminal masterminds. After he suddenly surrendered himself to the FBI and become an informant, he demanded to work with a rookie FBI officer, Elizabeth Keene. Agent Keene, what a pleasure. Why involve me? I'm nobody. It's my first day. Nothing special about me. Oh, I think you're very special. James Spader is playing the character of Raymond Reddington, the criminal mastermind. On the other hand, Megan Boone can be seen in the character of FBI officer Elizabeth Keene. As the story is progressing, the hidden agenda of Raymond is starting to unfold and his relationship with the agent Keene. Besides these two main characters, there are some more characters who are still in play from the very first of this show. But rest assured, we will tell you about every character of this story as it appears. Hey. Who I am. It's quite a story. So full of ambition and hope. Heart. Love and loss. You won't find the girl until you learn to look at this differently. And how should I look at this? Shall I show you? Let's discuss season one. The pilot episode of this show starts when Raymond entered FBI headquarters and surrendered himself. After he is taken into custody, he demanded to see the assistant director of the FBI, Harold Cooper. I'm here to see assistant director Harold Cooper. Do you have an appointment? I do not. Tell him it's Raymond Reddington. When Raymond meets with Harold Cooper, he tells him about the terrorist. But he also put a condition before Cooper that he will only talk with the new profiler Agent Elizabeth Keene. But from this point forward, there's one very important rule. I speak only with Elizabeth Keene. Who the hell's Elizabeth Keene? Agent Keene has no idea about Raymond, but she is ordered to collaborate with him. Agent Keene, Donald Wrestler. Washington field office. I need you to come with me right away. After the task force stopped terrorist, Raymond demands immunity for his blacklist, a list of high-profile criminals. Zamani was only the first. First what? Name on the list. What list? Let's call it the blacklist. That sounds exciting. At the end of the first episode, Elizabeth discovers several passports of her husband, Tom, played by Ryan Eggold. This discovery perplexed her because Raymond also knew about it. Your husband doesn't matter. Zamani did you a favor, Lizzie. What if I die? You'll never know the truth about your husband. You've discovered something curious about your husband, haven't you, Lizzie? In the next few episodes, Raymond and Elizabeth collaborated on many cases, and they captured some high-profile criminals and terrorists. In the 8th episode, 
Raymond visited the adoptive father of Elizabeth in a hospital. He kills him because her father, Sam, told him that she must know about her family. I need to tell Lizzie. No. I know what we agreed. But before I go, I have to tell her. I can't let you do that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Elizabeth begins to suspect her husband Tom, who still insists that he is innocent. To check his claim, the passports are tested in the FBI lab, but they proved to be fake. But Raymond still warned her about her husband's identity, but she refused to believe him. Later, it is revealed that Elizabeth Keene is not only the wife of Tom, but also his target. Handcuffs. I'm one of the good guys. Reddington, he is not who you think he is. I will find you. At the end of the 17th episode, I won. She finally came to know that Raymond was telling the truth about her husband, Tom. This broke her heart and she reached Raymond for his help. Be careful of your husband. I can only lead you to the truth. I can't make you believe it. You were right. In the next episode, Elizabeth, Raymond, and his bodyguard, Dambi, met in a hotel room. Dambi, played by his sham Tafik, captured the brother of Tom. Although he's a fake brother, they still managed to gain some information from him. He mentioned a name, Barlin but committed suicide after it. After this, Tom realized that Elizabeth knew his secret. He destroys all evidence and runs away. But Raymond has him captured and delivered to Elizabeth. As she tried to torture him for information, he ran away after telling her about Raymond and the box. key and the lamp, I know you found it. Take it to Radford Bank. Box number 3929. When she opened that box, she discovered a photo of Raymond in hospital next to her adoptive father. When she confronts Raymond, he accepted that he killed her father. Enraged Elizabeth called him a monster before ending their collaboration. Lizzie, I have an update for you on the movements of your husband, apparently Tom. Were you in the hospital room when he died? Did you kill my father? Did you kill him? Yes. I'm done. This ends right now. After this, things get worse for Raymond. He's against an unknown enemy. To lure him out, he must have all sort of help from the task force. But Elizabeth refused to do that and sent her resignation. Raymond's powerful allies and top government officials also refused to help him. Without Elizabeth, his immunity is gone and he will be imprisoned. My letter of resignation. Hello, Agent Key. I have an urgent case. He'll have to tell it to someone else. That's not going to work. You need to get in the car now. Lizzie, what have you done? They voided your agreement. The deal. It's off. You don't have immunity. At least you don't have to worry about immunity anymore. You are going to disappear. In the last two episodes, Raymond and Task Force members are targeted. Raymond finally has some help from his powerful friend, who is a member of mysterious organization. Tom is fatally shot by Elizabeth, and before going to blackout, he tells her that her father is alive. The season ends with a man walking in the streets and having a picture of Elizabeth's childhood. What? 
Tom told me something right before he died. What was that? Your father's alive. Now let's discuss season two. The second season starts more fiercely with its first episode. I told you if I ever found you in my territory again, I'd kill you. Tell him to put the gun down. In the first episode of this season, the battle between Raymond and Berlin becomes more intense. The ex-wife of Raymond is taken hostage by Berlin and his team. He intend to send him her body parts for his mental torture. But Raymond along with the task force comes into contact with a young girl in the second episode. This girl has the codes of Berlin's overseas bank accounts and all his money. Raymond used this opportunity and took control of all accounts of Berlin. Then Raymond meets with Berlin face to face and exchanges Berlin's money for a safe return of his ex-wife. This has been a long time coming. I hope it's been worth it. Revenge. That's my passion. Revenge isn't a passion, it's a disease. Give him the codes. A new member is also introduced in Task Force at this point, who is Agent Summer, played by Mozan Marno. How did it go? I'm in. I look forward to working with you. Well, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. In the fifth episode, it is revealed that Elizabeth has taken Tom as a hostage in an old warehouse. Further, Raymond came to know about a young girl named Zoe, which is the actual daughter of Berlin. Now the situation becomes clear for the audience in these episodes concerning Berlin and Raymond's story arc. For your understanding, Berlin wanted his revenge from Raymond since the start of first season. He believed that her daughter was killed by Raymond while he was in prison, but that is not true. His daughter is alive and Raymond finds her and arranged for her to meet her father. After their meeting, Raymond told him that they both were being fooled by someone else, who is their common enemy. Is this the daughter you're referring to? Because she's not my daughter. She's yours. All these years, Mr. Kierkoff, you've believed with the blackest of hearts that I murdered your daughter. And yet here she is. You fled. Must have had help. Who? There was a man. What was his name? I never met him. I don't know. His people, they called him the Decemberist. Eighth episode, The Decemberist concludes the storyline of Berlin as he and Raymond find the true culprit behind all this mess. And that person is Raymond's ally, Fetch, from the first season. Who is the Decemberist? His name is Alan Fitch. He set up Raymond against Berlin and eventually made his end. Before he was killed by Berlin, Fitch gave a combination of a save to Raymond and warned him for what's coming next. Ray, will you listen? We had an agreement. Yes. I don't go after you, you don't come after me. I know the terms, Ray. I think we have a problem. I have a safe. Get to it. Combination. 8-30-44. 8-30-44. It's in St. Petersburg, in the wall, on the second floor. At the end of the same episode, Berlin is also shot down by Raymond, and his story ends in this series.
In the aftermath, Tom is released by Elizabeth and he got help from Raymond who warned him to stay away from her. Do you have it? Look at me. You were never to see her again. After the ninth episode, the story changes dramatically and new players are introduced. Raymond and Elizabeth are now targeted by a mysterious organization whose member was Fetch. These people want to retrieve the fulcrum, which they believe Raymond has. For this purpose, Raymond is attacked by a mercenary, Luther Braxton, in the ninth and tenth episodes. Elizabeth is also suspected by this organization because it was stolen from her house when she was a child. This incident killed her family and she knows that Raymond has something to do with it. In the last episodes, the mysterious organization Cable finally reveals itself before the task force. The fulcrum which is seeking by Cable contains all their dirty secrets which can threaten every member of the organization. Bennington. That's me. You locked out, Red? I have complete control over this hellhole. I'm, if the fulcrum comes into play, we will find it. So Mr. Braxton is a liability? Oh, yeah. Mr. Reddington may no longer be a threat. I'm talking to you! I'm gonna need that shock <laughs> Sir, we got reports of gunfire in the North Hall. Oh, I can't raise anyone on the comms. Reddington. Agent Keene is facing an indictment for a murder she didn't commit. Elizabeth is in trouble. Elizabeth and Tom renew their relationship, whereas Tom Conley, a corrupt senator, blackmails Raymond and Elizabeth. With Elizabeth being a fugitive after killing Senator, and her name is also included in the FBI's most wanted list. Harold Cooper stepped down, and Agent Ressler is the new leader of the task force. Diego Klatenhoff played the character of Agent Ressler. The hunt of Agent Elizabeth Keene started by Ressler and Raymond is helping her to escape. As of Kebel, they have been exposed by Raymond in front of prominent journalists in the last episode. Listen to me, Carol Cooper, he had nothing to do with this. You need to turn yourself in. I keep running or be hunted down. I know. By me. I'm sure you recognize many of the faces behind me. A shadow organization that spans across every continent and has for the last three decades. Some call this group the Cabal. Now let's have a look at season 3. We're very close. This will all be over soon. Lizzie, where are you? We're coming. The first half of this season is based on a storyline of Kebel and the fugitive state of Agent Keen. The story is continuous from the end of the previous season. Elizabeth Keen, who is now a fugitive and being hunted by Kebel and FBI. Suspect's name is Special Agent Elizabeth Keen. She was my partner. But as of today, she's a fugitive. Capitol Police, Park Police, MPDC. We'll never make it out of the city. No, that's why we're not going to even try. Raymond is helping her while trying to figure out a method to save themselves. For this purpose, they must decipher the fulcrum and its contents, but this is not an easy task. Although it seems that a task force is trying to capture both Keen and Raymond, but they are still sure of Keen's innocence. Harry Cooper, who is also suspected of killing off Senator and Aria bombing is being interrogated by agencies. But he knows that Campbell is behind this bombing and gave a mission to Tom to track down a key member of Cabal. What would you do to help Elizabeth Keene? Anything. 
I don't trust you. You're a liar, a thief, and a murderer. Which is exactly why you're perfect for the job. Agent Ressler, who is also assistant director of Task Force, is forced to work with Peter Kotsipolas. He is the director of MCS agency and head of Cabal, who also becomes the supervisor of Task Force. These red velvet cake pops are delicious. The FBI and the CIA must communicate, which means you two must work together. I think you're making a big mistake here. The president doesn't agree. And if I'm not willing to cooperate, then you'll be replaced by someone else. In starting episodes of this season, things are getting worse and worse for Keen and Raymond. Mr. Reddington. <laughs> the fact that we're still alive means you need something from me. Whatever it is, let her go. My resources are at your disposal. Raymond finds a way to clear Elizabeth's name and to destroy Cable and its leader. He reached out to Venezuelan government officials and provide them proof of the director's of war crimes in their country. These proofs Raymond provided are taken after Fulcrum is deciphered. Mr. Foreign Minister, thank you for altering your itinerary to meet me. What is this about, Reddington? I was told a matter of national interest. Indeed. Those are chromium-plated master printing plates for the $100 bill. You son of a gun. I've been called worse. After Venezuelan authorities started to prosecute the director of NCS for war crimes, Tom tracked the key person who has proof of Elizabeth's innocence. In that way, Elizabeth's name is clear from all charges, but she's not more a part of the FBI. What the hell do you want? Stop the transport. It's not safe. Keep her in the cell. The corridors are not safe. What, what, are, you, what are you talking the about? The corridors are not safe. God! alleged criminal conspiracy known as the Cabal is real. Members of this conspiracy framed FBI agent Elizabeth King. Evidence overwhelmingly shows that Tom Connolly, the former attorney general, was a key member of this Cabal. I won't be an agent. I'll be an asset like you. I feel terrible about this. You don't. I mean, if anything, feel relieved. A week ago, I was facing 16 counts of capital murder. You're a consultant, not a sworn officer. You won't be going on field operations. On the other hand, Director is dead after his defeat by Raymond. The Director of the Clandestine Services of the CIA, Mr. Peter Katsiopoulos, is also part of this conspiracy. Looks like we'll be able to drop you off in time for dinner. get calm for a short period, but then, in the second half, the premise changed again. After the conclusion of Cabal and the director, things got normal between Tom and Elizabeth, and they got married again. But during their wedding, they are targeted by a mercenary called Solomon. You know why I'm here, send her out. It's curious, I thought you were the Cabal's most loyal soldier, and yet here you are under the patronage of a new benefactor. <laughs> He was hired by Cable to kill Raymond and Elizabeth, but captured by the task force. He was later released from prison by some unknown party who arranged his freedom and sent him after Elizabeth. During her running from Solomon, she got injured and taken to a hospital, where she delivers a baby girl. Elizabeth named her girl Agnes and becomes frightened for her safety. Some adhesions, hand me the bobby. Adhesions? Is that bad? It's common. Her condition becomes severe and while transporting to another location in an ambulance, Solomon stopped the ambulance. Due to her condition, Elizabeth died, which shocked every person including Raymond.
Engage targets, but do not kill Elizabeth Keane. Please, don't go. Please don't go. I don't want Elizabeth in the morgue. I want our people to handle this. Tom took care of his daughter after the supervision of Raymond, who is trying to find the mastermind behind Keane's death. But after some time, Tom disappeared along with her daughter, which enraged Raymond. I've known you for over two decades. I was there when you renewed your vows with Eileen, and suddenly you're the person who takes Tom Keane and his child out of the country, out of my sight. I just assumed when Kaplan came to see me, she was coming on your behalf. Kaplan? She made all the arrangements. She had all the documentation for your friend and his daughter. I just did what she asked. In the last episode, it is revealed that Elizabeth is alive and she's with her husband and daughter. A person who arranged all this is none other than the right hand of Raymond, Mr. Kaplan. I know you helped Tom and Agnes leave the country without my knowledge. Yes. I'm sorry you weren't more honest with Elizabeth from the beginning. <sighs> you made it. I saw her die. You saw what the doctor allowed you to see. The old lady is a personal cleaner of Raymond and she first appeared in first season. Mr. Kaplan is a code name of her and she was a friend of Elizabeth's mother. To fake the death of Elizabeth was her idea to stay her safe from any harm. When Raymond came to know that, he became a furious over Mr. Kaplan. Meanwhile, the mastermind who freed Solomon and tasked him to capture Elizabeth is Alexander Kirk. Raymond tracked down Keane and her husband in Cuba, but he arrived too late. She was already taken by Alexander Kirk, who told her that he is her real dad, Konstantin Rostov. That's where the third season ends. What am I gonna do with you, Kate? I've been imagining this moment for the last 25 years. Who are you? My name is Konstantin Rostov. Masha, I'm your father. And everyone thinks I dodged a bullet, but I think I shot the gun. Season 4 takes a rough start for everyone, especially for Raymond and Elizabeth. The situation that starts looks very difficult. The suspect's name is Special Agent Elizabeth Key. But as of today, she's a fugitive. <laughs> Elizabeth is taken hostage by Alexander Kirk who claims that he's her father. Tom has escaped from Kirk along with her daughter, Agnes. After Raymond learned about the betrayal of Mr. Kaplan, he became furious, but it doesn't matter now, because he needs to rescue Elizabeth, and for that, he needs help from Mr. Kaplan. In the second episode, Agnes is also taken by a mercenary hired by Alexander Kirk. But Raymond and Mr. Kaplan tracked him down, and with help of the task force, they raided the hideout of Alexander. But they found Elizabeth and Agnes is still missing with Kirk. In the last scene of this episode, Raymond took Mr. Gaplan into a remote area and shoot her. But for his bad luck, it is revealed that she is not dead yet. I have one chance to save Elizabeth. But to do that, we must work together. This is on you, Raymond. You were wrong to make her believe you could keep her safe. Please. She's alive. In the next episode, Elizabeth came to know about her mother and her past through a journal. Her mother, Christina Rostova, was a Russian spy, and her task was Raymond Reddington. She was given a mission to start an affair with Raymond so that she can infiltrate his operations. But at some point, things go wrong, and her mission was failed. Although Katerina was already mentioned in previous seasons, this time, her backstory is revealed to the audience. In the next episode, the story arc of Kirk comes to an end, with a surprise for everyone. After Elizabeth goes through a DNA test, she becomes aware that Alexander is not her biological father. Alexander Kirk says he's my father. You believe he's your father? My desire is to raise my child. You can't give me that. No, because she was never yours to raise. It comes as a shock for Kirk himself 
because he was suffering from a rare disease and needs stem donor for a transplant. Raymond arranged a special doctor which can cure him and that's why he doesn't need Elizabeth and Agnes as a donor. When Alexander Kirk came to know that, he peacefully left and his story ends in the 8th episode. After this storyline, a new and unprecedented threat emerged, which lasts till the end of this season. I can't trust you. As we told you earlier, Mr. Kaplan was shot by Raymond and he thought he had killed her. But to his surprise, she is returned for him, but not as a friend or employee, but as a vengeful enemy. Mr. Kaplan, whose real name is Catherine Nemec, started to destabilize Raymond's organization. She killed and disappeared his allies. If you ever put me in a position where I have to choose between what's best for you and what's best for her, I will choose Elizabeth every time. His colleagues, and most importantly, she suspended all his financial sources. Moreover, she turned over 86 dead bodies to the FBI and it raised questions on a validity of the task force. Raymond is now in grave danger and his other allies leave him to save themselves. But in the end, Raymond defeats her with help of Dom, grandfather of Elizabeth. But instead of surrendering, Mr. Gavlin commits suicide. There is another shocking revelation in the last episode, which is Raymond Reddington is the father of Elizabeth Keene. You owe me an answer. What's the question? Are you my father? Are you her father? Yes, Elizabeth is my daughter. Now let's discuss the season 5. My car about 20 minutes ago. I'm gonna be late. I'm so sorry, we don't seem to have this vehicle in the lot. My Range Rover is gone. The ticket is, the ticket is collateral for my $100,000 vehicle. And if it's not, it doesn't waste my time. I need to speak to your manager, okay? I am so sorry, we're having a little employee. The fifth season is not much interesting as the previous ones are. After the war between Raymond and Catherine, as known as Mr. Kaplan, Raymond is almost broken. He needs a lot of money and new contacts to run his criminal empire. So in starting episodes, Raymond is trying to build his empire again with help of a task force. The blacklist has value because it is based on the best possible intelligence. I'm scared of you. Because you're my daughter? In more ways than I care to admit. I'm surprised to see you here, Raymond. I heard you were uh, struggling. If you're struggling, you're alive. I said that you were so... I didn't know you were a collector. Yes. But three million for a book of coins is a bit rich even for my blood. Mr. Putnam, go find your money. I'm here to make things right. A proposal. You get your money, and I get the man who took your money. Now, what if I tell you I'm not leaving here without both him and my money? I put a bullet in your head and keep your money. The task force is forced to help him because Raymond told them that he can't help them without power and influence. So by targeting some blacklisters, Raymond planned different schemes to get power and money. In a short time, he gets both these and his criminal empire is established again. What the? We're closed today. How did you get in here? We need to talk. What do we know about this auction? Uh, not much. And according to Mr. Reddington, that is the appeal. What is that? I only brought one suit. I had to borrow something from Paolo. What color is that? Pumpkin? It looks like a pumpkin. His wife says it's Tuscan Sunset. Get a room under the name Mr. DeLacy. Say it. Mr. DeLacy. Right. I'll make contact when it's safe. Until then, talk to no one. Do you understand? <laughs> Good luck, mate. And Godspeed. For Elizabeth and Tom, things are normal. But Tom has a mysterious case that contains human bones. This case was given to him by Mr. Kaplan, and it is one of the biggest secrets of Raymond. I have no interest in getting involved with Reddington, but if what you said, if you think Liz is in some kind of danger, just tell me what you need me to do, okay? Thank you. He got away. Suitcase.
Determined to find out that secret, Tom goes behind Elizabeth's back and starts his own investigation. In his investigation, he is captured by a corrupt US Marshal, Ian Garvey, who also happens to be Kingpin. Raymond comes to know that Tom has briefcase and he rescued him from Garvey and his henchmen. But before Raymond can take his suitcase back, Tom eludes and arranged a meeting with Elizabeth to tell her the truth. But at the meeting, Garvey and his henchmen attack them and Tom is brutally killed by Garvey. Whatever you're doing, whatever it is you think you're going to tell Elizabeth, this is a mistake. Walk away from this, Tom. You know I can't do that. And why is that? Because I know the truth. You must be the wife. Yeah. What's your name, darling? <laughs> Sorry about this. After his death, Elizabeth vows to take revenge on his killers. In the 19th episode, she successfully takes revenge and she also knows about the suitcase through Garvey. You're right. I am unwilling to accept that I am not entitled to know why my husband died. I am hurt. I do blame you. And pulling this trigger, something I desperately do not want to do, is me howling at the moon, which is definitely your problem, not mine. Time that he He's all 911. Tell them there's been an officer involved shooting. Tell them it's a 1033. Say it. 1033. You will not die. Garvey. It's your last chance, Garvey. Tell me about that duffel bag. I'll take care of Reddington, I promise. In New In the last episodes, Elizabeth make a plan to know about the truth of human bones which Raymond is trying to hide. In the final episode, it is revealed that those bones belong to Raymond Reddington, the real Raymond and biological father of Elizabeth. This time, I have a secret too. I learned that from you. How to prey on the emotions of those that love you most. I'm dying to hear how you pulled this off. And that's the truth. And I can prove it. But it can't be. But it is. I have the back the bones, and the DNA report. Garvey gave me the bag in Costa Rica so I could get it to your sister. Did he tell you? Yes. But if this is gonna work... He's not talking. He will. You have to keep pushing. Tell me you're gonna kill me. Elizabeth. It's over. It was a great plot twist because Raymond, which we know, is an imposter. And this is a new storyline of coming seasons. your secret but she knows you've got one she's never gonna let it go those bones in that bag are raymond reddington's my father still i don't know where i belong at all let's talk about season six No way to rob a bank. This is I, honestly, I don't know what the hell this. The sixth season is mainly constructed on the revelation of the previous season. This revelation is that the real Raymond has died long ago, and the current Raymond is just an imposter. While digging the truth about the identity of Raymond, a name comes up which can be the key to find the truth. This name is Dr. Hans Koller. What do you know about a man named Hans Koller? Nothing, should I? He's the plastic surgeon of choice for the criminal underworld. Wizard of 
facial reconstruction. Dr. Kohler's been sighted, which is as rare as sighting the pygmy three-toed sloth. Only 79 of the deer creatures are left. Russian arms dealer, a very successful jewel thief thought to be dead, a wanted forger who's dodged Interpol for nearly a decade. Three examples of criminals we thought were dead or had gone dark, but who Reddington believes are still alive and well and continuing to commit crimes under new identities, courtesy of Dr. Hans Kohler. Don't screw this up. Dear sir, when I'm finished, your own mother won't know you. A person who can change other people's facial features and gives them new luck. When Raymond abducts that doctor, he checked his files and come to know a conspiracy. This conspiracy involves the President of the USA and Task Force must solve this case. In the files of Dr. Hans, the Task Force identifies a very dangerous and skilled assassin, Bastian Mario. He changed his face with the help of Dr. Hans, and nobody knows his true purpose. Everything is on schedule. I haven't heard from you in nearly a month. He's reaching out to arms dealers about an upcoming job. What job? Did he have any details? Reddington doesn't have any, but he's reaching out to his contacts now. But if he is right and Moreau is arming up, that means he's going to work. Let the man go through. Let the man go through. Run down in desperation. I imagined myself as a giant penis launching off from Earth like a spaceship. While helping the task force in capturing Bastion, Raymond ends up in jail due to 86 bodies revealed by Mr. Kaplan in the previous season. With the task force busy in the case of Bastion and Raymond is in jail, Elizabeth is trying to figure the truth about imposter Raymond. Raymond is facing difficulties in his case but the task force is helping him to clear his name. While in prison, Raymond hatches a magnificent plan to escape from prison. But in the end, he fails. Hands on the cart. Isn't this exactly the kind of harassment that makes people hate the police? Are you carrying a weapon? This is the most wanted man in America. The New York City Police Department arrested international fugitive and traitor to the United States, Mr. Raymond Reddington. You are the textbook definition of a flight risk and a danger to the community. No, let me be clear. Even if you were prepared to submit every last dollar in circulation on the planet, I still wouldn't grant you bail, ever. I was so sure my enemy was out there when he was in here all the time. No, we can make it. Go! 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 The task force came to know that their true enemy and mastermind of conspiracy is not Bastion, but another person. This person is Anna McMahon, Assistant Attorney General and Advisor of President Diaz. She is running her criminal empire and she is the person who hired Bastion in the first place. It's done. And the dossier. I told you the dossier isn't here. Do you have any final words? You want everything to be done to find out what happened. The only way to do that is to call off the execution. I suggest you watch your tone. Ava Ziegler may have died in FBI custody, but she died because you refused to spare Reddington's life. How dare you speak to me like that? Like I'm responsible for this? I am the President of the United States! Please tell me someone's gonna answer that. Yes? The President, he called it off. Wait, 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 Mr. Reddington's alive? They took out the IVs and he just walked away. It's incredible. After Raymond is safe from being executed and his immunity is restored with the help of Harold Cooper, he returns to help Task Force. In the last episode, the task force prevents the assassination of the president. It is revealed that the true target was not the president, but his wife, the first lady of the USA. Upon confronting her, she tells Raymond that her husband, the president, ran over a kid and his mother. She is the only witness and that's why her husband wants her dead. 
It was his plan all along. But the FBI forced him to step down from his designation and open a case on him. The season ends with a scene of Raymond's abduction by Katerina Rostova, who went to Paris to warn her about KGB. The assassination attempt. It wasn't aimed at the president. It was orchestrated by the president to kill you. This is your head. Hey. Asked, have you found her yet? We will. Huh. I sort of doubt that. He's in. The war room's blind. Reddington, you're on. You're bad enough to me. Cameras are down, you're clear. You so Gentlemen, Dr. Roy Fieldwood. So Love is blind. Harold, we're in a bit of a rush. Now let's talk about season 7. With only 19 episodes, this season starts with the most awaited storyline of this show. Kane. Elizabeth, Raymond's gone. Gone where? Taken. We have to get him back. Where's Reddington? Don't know! Name. A Russian. A Russian. A Russian. This storyline is about Katerina Rostova and her fate, which is also connected with Elizabeth. At the start of this season, Raymond was abducted by Katerina, but saved by Dambe, the only friend of Raymond throughout the series. After Raymond is free, Katerina moves next door to her daughter Elizabeth as her new neighbor. It's not safe. I don't like this, Raymond. I can assure you that before we're finished, you're going to tell me everything I want to know. But soon, Elizabeth finds out and confronts her mother about her intentions. Katrina finally told her about reality and her past as she asked her help to find the truth. He is. He's still out there. A benefactor to all of this. Why? Stop. They're protecting him. People are trying to kill me. They're hunting me. Answer me. Why? They know. If they know, Reddington knows. They're on their way. They've probably already set a perimeter. I can't leave without getting the answers I'm looking for. If you stay and try to find them, you will be caught. At this point, the story becomes clear for the audience about Katerina and Raymond. Katrina told her daughter that she was framed by the imposter Raymond and she has been running from every agency in the world. After putting in Dilemma to choose a side, Elizabeth chooses the side of truth and tells this to the task force. So she secretly starts her own investigation into this matter with help of Agent Ressler. What you did with Mark's body or, or how you even scrubbed that car clean, but... I learned from the best. Look, I want to know, I mean, because I need to know why. You have my permission to be a total dipstick. <gasps> so, what am I? Dipstick or a knucklehead? You're a knucklehead and a dipstick, and you're someone that I rely on for like <laughs> everything. Raymond, who is unaware of the fact that Katrina is collaborating with Elizabeth, still believes that Elizabeth is on her side. In the last episodes, a game of cat and mouse starts between Raymond and Katrina, and Elizabeth, along with the task force, are hanging between them. He sold you out. Where is she? He talked. No, he didn't. If he had, they'd be dead already. I got him. We're just gonna stay here and have a nice chat. Got the call a couple hours ago. It's two gunshot wounds to the torso at close range. That's him. I'll call off the hunt. 
Raymond is also showing signs of unexplained illness, which could be fatal for him, but except Dambey, nobody knows this. His identity is being questioned at the end of the season by Elizabeth, who is pursuing the truth. Is that really necessary? In the situation I'm in, in the situation Reddington put me in, there are no bystanders. I don't know what you did, but whatever it was, thank you. Thanks, can wait. I need you to do something for me. Art, was he helpful? Yes, very, thanks to you. Well, I didn't do anything. To be honest, I thought you would. Call her, take her sign. But you didn't, you took mine. I told you Reddington knew about Art and to call off the meeting. You want to know why I didn't? Art gave Reddington a way to find you. I'm sure he did. Because you let him. Which I did, because I'm sure you were right. Everything okay? Yeah. Everything's good. Sometimes there is no choice. And I think the outcome is in your hands. Now let's have a look at Season 8. Season 8 premiered from 13th November 2020 to 23rd June 2021. What? I'll be right there. With the release of 22 episodes, this season was definitely the most thrilled one. With every episode, a new surprise was given to the audience. You lied to me about Reddington. Convinced me he was Ilya Koslov. I know about the Sikorsky archive. We're good here. Target secure. The first one was the killing of Katrina Rostova in starting episodes. After that, fans see a huge transformation in every character, especially Elizabeth Keane, who not only embraces darkness to avenge her mother, but also crossed many boundaries in her pursuit of the truth. I know how you feel about Elizabeth. You killed her mother. How could you do that to someone you love? What do you want? I want to thank you. You told me to think like a criminal, and now I am one. You prepared me for this. Maybe because you knew it was inevitable, but because you did, I'm ready, and I'm coming for you. She also joined Neville Tonston, the main antagonist of season 8, and the arch enemy of Raymond Reddington. Nice work, Agent Keane. It looks like you've found yourself a partner in crime. We will kill him, Elizabeth. He's not afraid of death. Perhaps not. The man who came after you today. Neville Townsend. He won't stop. Really. Take your men and your guns and your bloodshed and go. Then come find me when you're ready and I'll show you the proper way to exact revenge. This season also has answers to those questions which were aching in our heads from the start of this series. For example, Elizabeth and Cooper were under the impression that Raymond was the mole planted by Russian intelligence, but it turns out that it was just a simple misunderstanding. Stop! No! Stop! Please! In the last episode of season 8, a lot of revelations happened and Raymond first time told the truth to Elizabeth. She not only came to know the past of her mother Katerina, but also the circumstances of her birth as well as the birth of Blacklist. To the audience's shock, the woman killed by Raymond was not the real Katerina, but a Russian spy framed by Dom, the grandfather of Elizabeth Keen. Thank you for the tour. Why am I here? Despite what you and Harold have come to believe, I am not a Russian asset. For Elizabeth's safety and protection, Raymond created a whole new intelligence network which is named Blacklist. Raymond told everything to Elizabeth but concealed his identity and relation with her mother. For her insistence, he agrees to tell her but only on one condition is that she have to take his empire after killing him. After much reluctance, Elizabeth agrees, but in the last moments, she is shot by Neville's right-hand man who wanted to avenge Neville's death 
at the hands of Raymond and Elizabeth. The last moments depict a devastated Raymond and a critically wounded Elizabeth approached by the task force. Season 9 has just started and 6 episodes have been released on Netflix. Just sit tight. I'll be at the motel soon. We'll talk to Khan. Oh my god, Stan, you have to get out of there. Stan? Stan! It started after 2 years of Elizabeth Keene's death. Much of it has changed because the task force has been disbanded and nobody knew about Reddington. Danby is now Agent Zuma of the FBI and in the first episode, his partner is killed. Eventually, Cooper recruited the whole task force again and as you know, the task force is not completed without Raymond Reddington. His real name is Graham Anderson. He was a foster kid, bounced around until he aged out. Two years unaccounted for and then he does a year at Stanford where he becomes obsessed with the French adventurer and smuggler, Henri de Montfred. I like him. He has a good soul. I believe he does. I'm less certain about mine. These six episodes focus on personal issues of every member of the task force. On the other hand, the unknown party is framing director Cooper for a detective's murder. Although Raymond hesitantly joined the task force again, he is not comfortable with the fact that Demby has left him to join the FBI. So the tension between them is already high, Raymond is back like every agent and Raymond is united with Agnes Keene who is staying with Harold Cooper. Who is framing Harold and what will happen between Raymond and Demby? The upcoming episodes will surely tell us. What is your thinking about the season 9? Should it go forward or not? Tell us in the comment section. If it is your first time, then don't leave without subscribing to CineWizard.